Hey guys, so the nightfall this week is Cerberus V3 with light switch, angry, and juggler, so no burns just like last time, but fortunately enough, I already have a guide on that exact setup. The link is in the description, so this run of the nightfall is just me and a couple of clan mates. Note that Valus's health is not nerfed yet. Those of you who read the weekly update last week might have seen patch notes that his health is getting nerfed. Yes, that is true, but it's not until patch 1.1.2, his health is still the same. If you have no clue what I am talking about, check the description. You guys seem to really like the QA last week, so let's continue and get to some more questions. The first question is, why is Trials of Osiris taking so long? Has Bungie even acknowledged its existence? Trials of Osiris was something that was data mined ages ago, very, very long time ago. Bungie has never confirmed its existence at all. So for all we know, it could have been something that was in the game, then was removed for whatever reason. That, or it still could be coming up, we just don't know when. Personally, I think you should just probably forget about it until Bungie actually confirms that it is or is not a thing. I will of course update you guys should it ever become a thing or if we learn anything about it beyond stuff that is data mined. Next question, do you think Destiny should get a trading system? If so, what would the restrictions be? As the game is right now, Destiny doesn't need a trading system. It would make the game so much easier than it already is, not to mention you'd see people probably attempt to sell full raid armor sets or exotics and Destiny doesn't need that. Sell them for real money, that is. Restrictions would have to be like, you could only trade low-end materials, but even then it's not like it's difficult to farm them. Destiny it just really doesn't need a trading system right now with the way things are set up. It's not like there's a crafting system in the game or an auction house or anything that would kind of supplement that trading system. I've had the suggestion thrown at me before, but the only way I think trading would be okay is, and I've since now come around to this idea, is if you had something drop in a raid and you wanted to trade it to someone else in your raid group, you would be able to do that, but only the people who are in your raid group and only for a very limited amount of time, say maybe an hour or so. Next question, do you think Bungie should take Ascendant Material out of the Nightfalls? I got 28 shards from the Nightfall this week. Do you think that Ascendant Materials should be a secondary reward, like Strange Coins for the Weekly Heroics? Well, I would like to think that you're doing uh, the Weekly Heroics for the Strange Coins, so I don't think they're really a secondary reward. I think the Engrams are more of a secondary reward, but Let's get to the main point of the question. Here's the thing. Materials for new players are awesome. They're just not awesome for everyone else who has an abundance of them. If there were a way for the game to detect how many materials you have already and that you clearly don't need them, then I would be on board with that. Otherwise, right now it's a necessary evil for you know, the super end game players. I think it would be better if there were just a smart loot system as opposed to making mats uh, a secondary reward, but I guess just giving a flat amount of materials with every nightfall wouldn't be the end of the world, like lower than what you'd earn as a reward. Maybe you would be guaranteed three to five along with a uh, legendary weapon or armor or something like that, or an exotic, as opposed to getting eight to 12 of them like you would as a reward like we do right now. Next question, are you finding it harder and harder to find Destiny topics and subjects to make into videos? Uh, yes, absolutely. Every day that I produce something quote-unquote original is one less idea that I have for the future. You know, weapon and armor guides are only going to last me for so long. As much as I would like to shift to a weekly schedule of content as opposed to just doing whatever I want to be doing, I feel like that might turn things a little stale, although it would be a bit easier on me. For example, if I were to switch to a weekly schedule, it might be something like top five PvP plays on Monday, Crucible commentary on Tuesday, Q&A on Wednesday, something else on Thursday, Xur on Friday, um, with the occasional original idea or Destiny news update being, you know, thrown in at random. Anything where the video can write the script, as opposed to the script writing the video, is going to be way easier on me to make and maintain, if that makes sense. But then, you know, I have those days where I just see people doing loot videos and engram openings and, hey, look, I just got this exotic and, you know, stuff like that. Just stuff that I think is low effort and I see that they're getting insane views and I wonder why I even bother in the first place. 
Like, I should just join the club. I don't mean that to sound like all I care about are views, but if you're doing one thing and you see someone else doing the same thing, but they take way less time to do the, that thing that you're doing and they earn more while doing it, you, you just can't help but look over and wonder what the hell they're doing differently. Um, that poll that I took about loot videos ended up at 77% yes. 77% of you who voted want me to do a loot video every so often. And I've been stocking up on clips for a video, but I haven't put that much urgency into it. And I have a feeling that if I put it out, I would still get met. I would still get massive hate anyway. So I just, I really can't win in that regard. Next question. Who is Deej and why does everyone on the forums complain to him? Deej is one of Bungie's community managers. It's basically his job to deal with the public. I'm definitely not doing his job description any justice at all because he does way more than that. But for the majority of us who just play the game, that's the one aspect of his job that you would be interacting with. He's not a developer, he's not an artist, he's not a designer. He takes everything that people talk about, gathers up all the hot topics, and feeds it to the people at Bungie, and then Bungie feeds him back information and he gives it to us. And by Bungie, I mean like the developers and the designers and all that kind of stuff. I will usually take any notable information that he gives us and turn it into a video for the record. Next question, have you considered creating an awesome opener to your videos? Something to go along with your patented sign-off. If you're talking about like a graphical intro, um, when I was part of the Call of Duty YouTube community, I saw so many terrible, long, loud, obnoxious intros, and I basically vowed off having an intro because of that. I never wanted one in the first place because people watching my videos you, well, you know who I am when you click on the video. It says my name right above it. For me, I would rather just get to the freaking video. I sort of introduce each video anyway before I start, but, you know, if you're, if you're talking about a graphic, I understand what you mean. I don't think I need one, but if I ever did make one, it would be something very short. Once again, graphical. Uh, just really hasn't been a high priority for me. Now, if you're talking about, like, a catchphrase or something like that... Eh, it's not really something that I'm looking to force or anything like that. I just kind of like the way that I do things now. Next question. What's your opinion on No Land Beyond? According to the Bungie Q&A that was held last month, it's designed as a PvP run and gun weapon. I think the sites could be cleared up a little bit because even if you did that, it's not like everyone would be running around with a No Land Beyond. Although the more skilled snipers may be able to cause some havoc with it, and you may be cursing its name a little bit more. If they wanted to make it a respectable PvE weapon, which they can't, but if they wanted to try, they should increase the damage to at least be close to uh, the Black Hammer, because right now it hits like a wet noodle. It wasn't designed for PvE though, it was designed to be this run and gun sniper for PvP. As for my actual opinion, if I actually want to answer the question that you asked, I think the sights are atrocious, and moving with the sniper in the aimed position makes me feel like I'm walking on a boat that's rocking back and forth in the ocean. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. If you were to create a potential fifth enemy race in Destiny, what features or mechanics would they possibly have? I, I definitely like to see some sort of beast-like creature race in Destiny. Everything right now is a humanoid, right now. I mean, I know we have like different types of humanoids and different types of humanoid races, but they're all two arms, two legs, or multiple arms and two legs. And I think it would just, it would create a different fighting experience to see some of these kind of like beast-like creatures. But I don't know how combat would really work with them though. Would they use guns? Would they just be melee all the time? I guess that might create some sort of an issue if you had to fight melee all the time, but I have not given it too much thought, but anything anything sort of beast-like would be cool with me. Next question, do you have any expectations for House of Wolves? Do you think it will improve our experience on Destiny significantly? Well, content-wise, like how much stuff they put into the game, I expect close to the same amount with what we got with Dark Below. So a strike, a raid, some story missions, updated gear. But I'm hoping for a little bit more than that. What I'm hoping for is stuff that increases investment opportunities in my characters, whatever that might be, and increased replayability 
more reasons to go back and do stuff. Collectibles, leaderboards, whatever it is. Given that it'll probably be coming out in May, I would be shocked if it came out in April. They've had a, a little bit of extra time maybe compared to Dark Below with regards to getting feedback from the community. My expectations are that it'll be a little, at least a little bit better than the Dark Below, but Dark Below and House of Wolves, you know, we're, we're kind of kind of seem to be the same kind of expansion in what they aim to do content wise. I don't think it's, you know, going to turn the game into a 10 out of 10 must buy IGN blah 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 jokes, but I think we'll see some improvement. It's obviously in Bungie's best interest to constantly be adding and improving the experience, so I am expecting it to be better than Dark Below. Next question, does the G-Horn need a nerf, and if so, what should Bungie do? Will it be as powerful in the House of Wolves? I think the G-Horn just needs to go away, because it creates too many problems. It's just way too good for what it does. But if you nerf it, and nerf it enough, you'll never see it used anymore, because it won't be worth the exotic slot. Every tactic in the game shouldn't revolve around seeing how many G-Horns you can get into a party and blasting the boss into smithereens. I think it does deserve a nerf to some degree, maybe a slight damage nerf, uh, nerf on either the impact or the wolf pack rounds themselves, but it's, it's just way too efficient right now, to a fault. Yes, I realize that's not a super popular opinion, you can keep your yelling in the comments to yourself on this question. Uh, it will be as powerful as uh, it is in the Dark Below in the House of Wolves, provided that we have the option to upgrade it at Xur, much like we did in the Dark Below. Next question, what type of metal bands do you like the most? Um, my favorites right now are Five Finger Death Punch, Trivium, Of Mice and Men, Atreyu, and um, a bunch of others I'm sure that I'm missing. I'd say August Burns Red is basically like my limit of metal hardness. I won't go too much harder than them. Hey Dado, do you think you'll play with Gathalion on stream again anytime soon? I really liked the one that you did with him a few months ago. That's actually how I discovered him. Yeah, I mean, I would like to, but I don't think I have the personality type to hang with him. And like, I guess like by extension, Professor Broman. Like when Gathalion and Broman play together, they're two very, very big personalities. They're good at what they do. They can keep an audience entertained. They're loud in a good way, and they have great chemistry. Me, on the other hand, I barely say anything. I'm a very quiet guy, so I just don't think I mesh very well with them in a stream setting, which is why I haven't really pushed the issue at all. You know, not to mention that Goth streams a little bit earlier in the day, and usually... I'm working on videos during that time. I'm sure if I just asked him ahead of time if I could join in on one of his streams, I could, but I just feel like I have nothing to offer, and I feel like I'd get in his way at worst and just be another person in the stream at best. So that's that's kind of why I haven't pushed the issue. Next question. I know you used to be involved with television before. What did you do? Yeah, so I worked in television for about two and a half years before uh, YouTube kind of kicked off. I was a production assistant, aka a glorified janitor and chauffeur for the most part. But, you know, I had a couple of higher up roles here and there as a coordinator, a manager, an assistant editor. The most notable position I held uh, was an associate producer on the show Hollywood Game Night on NBC for their first season. So I was... A part of the creative team that thought of, prototyped, and designed all of the games that were played on the show in that first season. It was actually one of the most fun jobs I've ever had. And, you know, even though there was like a time where for three weeks straight we had 13 hour days, it was it was easily the most fun job I've ever had. And by three weeks straight, I mean like including weekends, like 21 days in a row where we worked with no breaks. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Next question. Do you think PlayStation exclusives will ever come to Xbox? When? Uh, not only do I think they will, they are going to, supposedly in the fall of this year, so look around September-ish for any information on when PlayStation exclusives could be coming to Xbox. I will, of course, update you guys whenever there is any news. Those are your questions of the week. Remember that you can always ask me stuff on Twitter, on my Facebook page, in my streams, and at my AskFM page. I try to answer as often as I possibly can, but that's going to do it for me.
Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you next time.